friends, it's Chris and my friend Pia here, um, back for the November blog class. We skipped October because we had a lot going on trying to create fun um, and creative things for you all to, to purchase. So we were gone for a little bit, but we're back and we missed you. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, this is Pia Johnson and she's a special friend of Bo Bunny's. She's um, a very creative person. She makes all kinds of gorgeous projects, and I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about herself. Well, I was born in Denmark. I kind of grew up doing crafts, and I grew up having an advent calendar, so when I was asked to make one, it was just such a thrill because of the excitement of it growing up, and just the anticipation every morning waiting to see what was in the next package. So. This was a real fun project for me to get to do. And I think you would have seen a, a little panoramic of it at the beginning of the video, and we'll show you lots of close-ups. But you're just going to be so amazed at all of the detail. We've got little hanging trinkets. We've got little Christmas trees. Um, there's candy and presents. There's candy that's just wrapped. The 25th, there's a special delivery here inside of the caboose for the 25th. Um, and each little car is connected to the next. It's so much fun. You're going to have a blast making it, and your children are going to have so much fun opening their little package every day. So hopefully you've got all your supplies from the supply list that's at the top right of the blog. And if not, this video will be here as long as you need it, and you can come back and make it. So make sure you get your stuff and join with us in the fun. Okay, we're going to start first with a light piece of chipboard, and we're going to do a 9.5 by 12 piece. So measure out your 9.5, it's already 12, coming this way. So you're showing them how to make the pattern? First we're going to make the body of the engine. This is what it's going to look like when we get it all drawn out, and I'm just going to show you how to draw the grit for the body of the, the engine. Nice. And we're just going to be using this piece here and we're going to discard this piece right here. So on the 12 inch side here, or excuse me, on the 9.5 inch side, we're going to start with half an inch. It's going to be your first mark. And then 4 inches. Four and a half inches, seven inches, and seven and a half inches. And same thing on the bottom so we can get some straight lines going through. Half an inch, four inches, four and a half, seven, and seven and a half inches. And just draw those straight across. We're just going to break this down so it doesn't seem so overwhelming to begin with. And it's okay to draw on your chipboard because we'll be covering it with paper. So this is the actual chipboard that is the engine. This is kind of the skeleton of the engine, but okay. inside. So it's not just a pattern. It's actually... It's the actual piece we'll be cutting out Aha. for the body. And we will put um, below the video on the pictures, we'll put those measurements that she said. So don't, don't stress if you think you didn't hear them or you're trying to rewind and listen again, we'll, we'll write them down for you. Whoop, that one got really wobbly there. Straight lines work better, but <laughs> you know. Okay, so we're going to turn it to the 12 inch side and we're just going to draw some more lines. We're going to go three inches, four and a half, five, seven, seven and a half, and nine. And same thing on the bottom. Remember, we cut this piece off. So we're just going to start right here. Again, at three, four and a half, five, seven, seven and a half, and nine. And just draw some more straight lines. On me, Chris. Uh huh. <laughs> you got yours done? No, I should. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Alrighty. So now if we can see it side by side, it's starting to come together. Okay, so this is also going to get cut out. This over here is going to get cut out. This is going to get cut out. And this over here is going to get cut out. Okay. Just to give it a little more interest on the curve, we're just going to take this little piece And just from this point, just give it a little curve up. Same thing on the other side. We're just going to give it just a little curve right there. So okay. where where is that on the on this? It's this part right oh, here. Oh, okay. I see it. So if you look at it this oh. way, this way your window is going to go. And this is this piece right here. Okay. That's starting to come together. This is the bottom, and this is the back side. Oh. Okay. So once it's folded, you see the start of your engine. Okay, then we're going to do the window, and you're going to put the window right here in this spot, in between where the curve is, and that's going to go in. If you look down from the top, you're going to look two inches, and you're going to go put your right there on the two inches, and then you're going to go up one and a quarter. And same thing over here, two inches and one and a quarter. And that's the beginning of the opening of the window. And go ahead and draw all the way across. It's not going to matter. And then coming the other way, you're going to go in one and a half. Excuse me, half an inch on this side and half an inch from the other side. Half an inch from this side half an inch from this side. And ta-da! There's your window. Okay. That's your window right there. You're going to do the same thing over here. And then we're going to start cutting. So once it's all drawn up, it's going to look like this. I cut... These are going to be cut out. Just the little tabs here are going to be cut out. And this is the main body. If we go back to the original, that's your main body here. And these are the flaps that are going to bend. Okay. By cutting the corners off, does that just make it easier when you're gluing? Or? Yes. When you fold it down, it's going to go together easier because they're not touching each other and trying to push each other out. All right. So you're just going to cut along all your edges. And this is the discarded piece. Really simple, you just on the tabs just cut the corners. This one just gets a cut right there in the middle. Just gonna cut all those off, just like that, all the way around. This one already have the cut right there. Now, to get the window cut out, sometimes it can be kind of hard to cut with scissors. So, if you want, you can cut it out with a craft knife. Just get your mat and your calf knife, and you're just going to cut right along the lines. The chipboard's a little bit thicker, so you might have to run over it a couple of times. And then you can kind of punch out your window. There you go. There's your windows. Nice. And we're going to be covering those with paper too, so if they're not perfect, that's okay. Okay. See, I have some solid lines and I have some stippled lines. The stippled lines are going to be the ones we score and fold on. With chipboard, it can be a little bit harder to use a scoreboard. And if you don't have a scoreboard, there's a really simple solution. You can use a bone folder or a stylus, and you just take your ruler. Lay it right along there, and you're just going to score all across. Just give it a couple of good runs across there. And again. So you said it's actually easier to do it that way than on your board. On paper, it's easy to, to use the board, because it, it, but when this is a little bit thicker, 
I find it harder to use the board. Okay. And you're just going to fold it up like that. And now you're starting to see it's coming together, right? Oh, it's looking like a train. And this is also going to get a score right here. And that's going to be the back side of the train right here. Building it piece by piece. And these little guys are already when we did the long trim, so they just fold right in. And those are your gluing tabs. Nice. And now you already see your little paper. We're also going to run one right here. And that's going to hold the front of the train. So ta-da, we're already way ahead. You're going to score along all the black edges. Remember we cut right here so this one will fold down just fine and this one will fold in. Our next step is going to be to paper. So we're going to paper before we put it together so we don't have any open seams. Okay. For the engine body, we're going to use the licorice double dot. And the best way to paper is to do it in sections because once you bend it, it's going to stretch a little bit and you don't want it bubbling. I like to use glue for this because I find when I use my, my tape runner, it doesn't stick as well. So I'm just going to start with the first part. Get that good and glued. And we're just going to stick it on the edge. Just a little bit above the edge because it's going to need to stretch just a little bit. Just press it down really good. And don't worry about the window for a minute. We're going to go back to that. Okay, to get a nice crease, I'm just going to fold the train over. And then just run my stylus right along the edge right there. So when you bend the paper up, it's going to have that nice smooth crease. I love that. If you try to glue it all together at the same time, once you try to bend it, it's it stretched. I've had that yeah. problem covering books and everything. That was yep. a great tip. So a little bit giddy right now. <laughs> Go ahead and snort. <laughs> Sarah's a snorter when she loves oh. too. <laughs> Good. Good company. Okay, same thing. Just press it down. Oh, that kind of makes me happy. <laughs> Learn new things every day. Yes. The other thing I thought you did that was brilliant that I love is in cutting the window, I would have been like trying to measure from the outside <laughs> edge, and she just went all the way across. That was brilliant. Yep, because you won't see it. Now, I did go ahead and cover the inside of the the engine when I was putting it together, but you really don't have to. You can just stick something fun in there, like a little Christmas tree, or and then you won't ever see the inside. So that's, you know, personal preference if yep. you want the inside yep. done. I thought just for class purposes, we just finish it off and bend it up again. And don't you find that... Like, there's some of us who have a little more OCD than others, and it would bug some people <laughs> to see the raw chip board, but other people would be like, ah, whatever. Yeah, some of us are recovering perfectionists. <laughs> try not to, but it still gets us sometimes, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, now you're going to cut all along your edges. And once it's cut out, you have your whole paper covered. Okay. For the windows, really simple. Just grab your craft knife again. Cut out a little square, and it doesn't have to be perfect at all. And then you're just going to go down the corners, and you're going to fold them inward and glue them down. Oh, see now I would have just went. Cut yeah, it out. and then you'll see the chipboard. Then you got to start inking, and but All from right. the outside, it has a nice little crease. And we will be putting trim on if you prefer, so that'll cover that up too. If it's not a perfect cut, but that well. was that was a good way to cover that. Don't like raw edges when we don't have to. <laughs> right. Have them. Okay, 
So the next step, we're going to do the front part of the train that comes like this. And that's just going to be a long strip. It's three inches across, and you're going to do the full, almost full 12. We're just going to cut this one piece off that's going to be discarded. So you're going to go to 11 and a half this way, and three inches this way. And again, we're going to draw lines. You're going to do half an inch, two and a half, and you're going to draw your line straight down again. And then for folding, if you can see, we're going to do two inches, six inches, and nine inches. And the only place that gets flaps are the last piece where we cut the discarded piece off. And that's two, two and a half inch piece. It's going to get the flaps on the corners. Now, was I not listening, or what part does this make? What part are we making right now? This is making the front of the train. Okay. This part that goes like this. Okay. And once you start cutting it out, it's going to look like this. And again, just going to cut the flaps, tabs, and then just cut right along the outside line. Okay. And you're going to score right along the stipple lines again. One here, one here. Come across one, two, and three. Okay, now we're going to bend where we scored, and the first part is going to bend like this. Second part goes up, and third part back down. So it looks like a little ladder, and the tabs are going to get folded in, and that's the roof part. Now this part's also going to need to be covered in paper, and we're just going to do it exactly like we did with the main engine part. We're going to glue it down. Make sure to get glue out on the edges. That's where it's going to come loose if it comes loose. Just going to glue it down. And score it again. Up. And you just continue to glue the whole thing, one piece at a time. I just think it's interesting to watch the different adhesive and glue mm -hmm. that different people use, what you find to be your favorite. This is my favorite. Quick dry it adhesive just, from Scotch. It just, it gives you just enough time to adjust, but you don't have to sit and hold it forever. Wait forever, yeah. Yeah. And when you're in the middle of a project, you don't want to sit and wait forever. For it to dry, so stack books on it. Right. And I find a lot of times I get a better hold with glue than tape runner. I use my tape runner a lot, but I like glue. Glue on it. Yeah, especially on projects that mm -hmm. you know kids are gonna. Right. They're gonna drive it and choo choo. <laughs> and in fact, one of our employees here had their sun in yesterday and they couldn't get him to pay attention to the candy or the costumes. <laughs> All he wanted was the train. Oh, that's train. Awesome. He was just obsessed with the train. As try as everyone might to get his attention elsewhere, he just wanted the train. That's awesome. Yeah, it's always fun. You know, it's it's for kids. So Christmas is about the kids. Okay. And then you're gonna cut it out just like you did the engine. Okay, our next step is gonna be the front of the train, the bow part, where the smokestack comes out of, and that's just made from this piece, and it's three and a quarter by four and a half, and again you just draw your square, three and a half by four and a half, and we're just going to give it a half an inch tab on each side, and then we're going to make a hole in the middle where the smokestack is going to come out. And you're going to go in one and three quarter inches in and come in this way. 
you're going to do an inch and a half. And that's your midpoint, and that's where your hole is going to be. At this point, I just took a punch and cut a circle out and laid it right. I folded it in half both ways, so when it was folded, your mark lines will match up, and that's where you get your perfect circle right in the middle. Oh, nice. Okay. And you'll cut that out just like the other one, and you're going to end up with a piece that looks like this. Okay. And you take the corners off all the tabs again. Now to bend it, you're going to need to mist it with some water. And then you can just stick it over something that's, you know, a little, maybe a little bit bigger than the glue. Um, so just stick it over and let it dry. Just a light, light mist. I use glimmer mist because that's all I had handy. But you don't want to waste <laughs> product, you know. <laughs> I know. So if you see a little glitter, that's why. And you just want to let it sit and dry. Then you're going to score along the lines again. And then you'll take paper and you'll paper it. But before you do that, you're going to need to cut the hole for the smokestack. Because it's a lot easier to do before you get it on the paper, okay? So same thing. You're just going to make your little circle just like we did for the windows. This time it's a circle. Gonna cut a circle around. Okay, and then you're gonna go out and just make little tabs all the way around so you get that clean edge. It's all gonna just fold right around your chipboard. And that's your top piece. So did we did was I not listening? Did we cut our black piece the same size? I just cut them a little bit bigger, just okay. so they fit. And then once it's all on, you cut it to size. Okay. Yeah. That way you don't end up with white edges okay. in case you cut it a little too short. Nice. Okay. So that way, when I designed it, I actually cut a paper toilet paper roll in half, and that's what the train is made out of is a toilet paper roll. But you can make chipboard pieces like this that are just a little bit sturdier. So it's a toilet train, really. It's a toilet tray. Yeah. So once that piece is done, that's going to go here. But we'll, let, we'll put it all together in a minute. Okay. The second piece is the top of the train. It looks like that. It's going to be three and a half by four and a half. It's the exact same piece as the top piece we just did. But we're not going to do the hole this time. And it's going to get cut uh, just a little bit different. Once you have your piece cut out, and again you're going to fold it over something. This time, to make it fit on the roof, we're just going to go ahead and snip it in half an inch. So you're going to snip your corners half an inch and remove them on all four corners. And then you're going to score again along the dotted line. And that way when you get it up here, it's going to sit nice and flush, but you're going to have a little bit of overhang on both sides. Oh, cute. And that way the tap won't show on the front and the back. Okay. And again, same thing. Paper it and make sure to keep your fold once the glue dries just so it doesn't go flat again. And then you have your top. Nice. Now we have the paper glued on the front. And with the thing sticking through, it looks like a little sun on the inside. And that's your front piece. Then to make the smokestack, we're just going to cut out a piece of paper of four and a half by five. And you're just going to start rolling it up. And to make the exact fit, you're just going to stick it through and let it unravel, and that's your size. Nice. And then it fits nice and snug in your hole. And you're going to glue it, and that's the begin beginning of your smokestack. So run a strip of glue, or your tape runner. side. Just 
got to manipulate it just a little bit to get it to fit just right. Try and line it up really well. And then hold it down to the loop. And that's your smokestack size. Or Chinese finger cuffs. <laughs> and my glue dried too fast. Anyways, you get the idea. And that's your smokestack. Well, the smokestack on the little train also has a top that we're going to decorate. And to do the top, it's going to look like this. When it's first drawn out, it's going to be five and a quarter by one and a half. And again, we're going to have the half an inch tab. You're going to cut it out. And cut out all the little triangles so it'll bend better. And they don't have to be perfect. They're just going to be bent under. So you're just going to go in, cut all those out, and remove them. Now you're going to score along here so it makes it a little bit easier to bend. Same thing, just run it along your ruler, and then you have your tabs. A good idea before you bend them, though, is to paper the front side. And there's no front and back on this one, it's just either side you can paper, and then just fold it inward. And then you're just, again, going to trim off the excess. And then get it just a teeny bit wet again, so it doesn't crack when you fold. And then you're just going to twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. Until you have a nice circle. Okay, the size of the circle is going to be determined by the size of the top. And I punched out a one and a half inch top. So once you put your top on, you can see the size of the top of the smokestack. And that'll just be papered also and glued right on top. And you'll glue this one together. Okay, so now the smokestack's put together and the top's put together. And you just put some glue inside and stick it on top. Now if your paper cracks a little bit like mine did, you can just ink it or get some black marker and color it in. And that's your smokestack, and it'll fit right inside. Put trim around it so you won't really see it. Okay. To get the front, you're going to cut approximately a two-inch circle and cut it in half, a little more than half. So just go a little bit more than half, and again, paper it. Cut the little tabs. And they're just going to fold in so we get that nice smooth edge again. And that'll also be the tabs that you attach. So glue, and that's your front right there. Nice. Okay, while you glue that, I'm going to tell him. You know, Pia called this a toilet train because she used the toilet paper roll. Well, all you potty training mothers or grandmothers who have daughters potty training, wouldn't this be so cute if you did it in another line, like on the go? and made your train with your little gifts in it, and then every time your cute little child goes potty in the toilet, they get to take out a box and open it or eat a piece of candy. That is so cute, Chris. I think that would be a great idea. If I were being potty trained, I would totally love it. <laughs> they would beg to go to the bathroom. Yes, I think they would. So, just an idea to use maybe another line of paper and recreate it also. Too cute. Too cute. Okay, and that's just going to be your front right there. Nice. Okay, so now we pretty much have the whole train put together in pieces. And now comes the fun part of putting it together in one piece. Yay! Yay! Okay, now we have all the pieces cut out and papered. We're going to start putting it all together. But really quick, we need to make a hole where it attaches to the carts. Or, I did a little 
fun little paper clip that can also attach if you don't want to make a hole. But if you decide to make the hole, you're going to go in halfway and then just up just a teeny tiny little bit. It's hard to get a hole punch in there, so if you have one, you can just make a hole. And the didn't work because the table's too wobbly. Yeah. The surface is not hard enough, but you'll punch a hole right there. And then we're just going to start to glue. Again, I probably wouldn't use a tape runner because it's getting pretty stiff now here, so it's going to need a lot of adhesive to stay together. And now sitting and holding the glue part is just what takes a little time. You could also put tape, a piece of tape inside, just to hold it while it glues. And it, you won't be able to see it. And then we're going to put the front on. Glue on the front. We'll do that part first. I'm just going to match your front up to the front. Where it bends and the sides to the side. And just hold it while it dries. And then we're just going to go up the tabs and go inside here. Essentially, the tabs are just going to get glued on there. Up and over and hold it to dry. And don't worry about the open edges here because we're going to decorate around it and you won't ever see those. And we're going to put the roof on top. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, next we'll attach the smokestack with the front part. This is my favorite part when it starts coming together. You can start seeing what you're doing. And we're going to do the top part up here. Those little tabs are just going to fit right on the roof. And if you're thinking, like, well, I don't think that's going to be sturdy. I'm telling you, this the sample train that Pia made, we've taken it for the photo shoot. We've put it in and out of boxes. It's been moved from this table to that table to the floor for our Halloween party, back to the other table. So it's sturdy. It's put together. It's, it's not falling apart. Next, we're going to attach the wheels. And the way we cut out the wheels... The large one that sits in the back, I cut from a two and a quarter inch circle, went smaller to one and three quarters, and then three quarter circle. And you don't have to use those measurements if you don't have the right size punches, just so they graduate down. And then the smaller circles are going to be one and three quarter, one and one quarter, and three quarters. And I've just attached them with foam dots in between. And then we're going to attach them to the train. And to make sure that they're, they're the same level on the train, I just measured up from the bottom and went about three quarters of an inch up and drew a line. So when I attach it to my train, I line it up right on the line. Smart. And now comes the funnest part. We get to start decorating. So you put your wheels on and we're ready to go. And you can decorate it any way you want or you can take some of the paper and cut it out and make all your own decorations. I took the mistletoe and cut that one out. And you can put it up on top. If you want to make it with a scallop, you just take scallop scissors, any type you have and just cut along the dots and right there you can wrap it all around you can cut it in a double strip and it's just the one that's called mistletoe and just you just cut it down into strips and for the decoration around the top and on the smokestack I just took the lights on the paper and trim out around it. And then I took my glossy accent and just filled in the
the little bulbs. It's so cute. My angle, I'm looking at it, they look like little light bulbs. They look like little light bulbs. If, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but they just, they fill out. You just put a dab on. I can't get it to go right now. But you just fill them in, and once it's dry, you just wrap around like that. I took some little jewels and put them in the middle. And I glossy accented some of the stars from the chipboard pieces. I took some of the buttons, the little um, holly leaf buttons, and glued them on each side. Took some more of the jewels for lights. Put a little bumper on the front. The bumper just measures half an inch by two and a half inches. Oh, that's a little short. But this one is two and a half inches by half an inch. And to stick it on, I took some, they're just pop dots, little square pop dots, and I just wrapped paper right around it. And they stick to the front. And put some more of the dot paper on the front. And this paper is also the, the dot paper that looks like this. Took a three quarter inch punch, go right in the middle, find the center, punch it out. That's what we call creative. Throw it on the floor, <laughs> pick it back up, and that's your center of your wheels. That's yep. the three quarter one. And again, on the little cart you'll see next week, we're going to just glossy accent in the middle. So if you don't want to do jewels, you can just glossy accent like the middle of that. I put a little, one of the ones on the back here, the embellishments, and I just stuck it in with a little piece of paper because it's countdown to Christmas, and I just love this little clock. Cute. That's not a trinket. That's a trinket, yeah. yes. You can put a little jewel in the middle. You can put a couple of little jewels up here, and same thing on the other side. Inside the train, I took another piece of chipboard. They have a couple of little gingerbread, a little gingerbread girl and a little gingerbread man. Put jewels on them, stuck them inside the window, and put a piece of paper behind it. And then you have your little gingerbread man peeking out. So cute. And then I just took a little wooden um, dowel, an acorn, but you can use any kind you want. Paint it up with a little acrylic paint, put another jewel on top, and just put it right there. So I'm going to show you this. So it's in the wood shop. Did you get these like in the wood? It, I did, yeah, in the wood section of the craft store. And it's called an acorn dowel cap. And she got four pieces, so she was able to do the whole train and have an extra. And have an extra one. Yes. And then on top, just took some batting, pulled off a nice size piece, whatever however much you want, glued it down, and it just stays on top like it's smoking out the smokestack. And there's your engine. That wasn't so hard, was it? No, that was easy. I love it. All right, so that's it for week one, and we'll be back next week, and we're going to do the engine. So join us for that, and we will talk to you later. Just kidding, we're doing the little carts next, not the engine. We did that this week.